around the U.S. Civil War has largely been controlled by the people who lost it. The losing side of a civil war usually ends up being hung at the gallows or on the wrong end of a firing squad. But the U.S. Civil War ended very strangely. Everybody just sort of went home. The Civil War was about a lot of things, but mostly it was about slavery. Countless historical documents bear this out. Now, America was still a very racist country in 1865. Yep, this guy too. But Abraham Lincoln did eventually back a lot of important legislation, including the 13th Amendment and the Freedmen's Bill. But his main goal was to keep the Union together, so he also pardoned a ton of Confederates, the soldiers who fought for the South. When the Civil War ended, there were no tribunals, no exiles, no executions. There was no real reckoning or punishment around the sedition that had just taken place. General Grant negotiated a deal where all the former Confederate soldiers and officers could simply pack up their bags and go back to their families. This left the door wide open for a whole propaganda campaign waged by white Southerners that came to be known as the Lost Cause that would last for decades and whose effects are still being felt to this day. Stay tuned for part two. Southern whites were allowed to completely rewrite the narrative around the Civil War and even cast themselves as heroes in hindsight because they were never really held accountable for their acts of sedition against their own country. Because Presidents Lincoln and Johnson pardoned the majority of Confederate officers and soldiers to keep peace in the Union, they got to go back to their homes and begin the process of rehabilitating their images for the generations that would follow. This left the door wide open for a thought movement in the American South that came to be known as the Lost Cause. The Lost Cause propaganda campaign centered around three things. Portraying Southerners as heroic patriots that were fighting for a just cause and who were simply outnumbered, promoting the narrative that enslaved people were treated well and that they loved their masters and were essentially happy to serve, and that slavery was not the root cause of the Civil War. This narrative ended up in films like Birth of a Nation and in one of my favorite films, Gone with the Wind, and in textbooks all over the South. And it also led to the erecting of a ton of monuments in former Confederate states that honored veterans of the Confederacy. In part three, I'm going to tell you about the Southern Women's Group who's responsible for keeping this whole narrative going. Ever wonder why white Southerners tend to view the Civil War so differently from everyone else? For a lot of folks in the Southern U.S., that whole history has been whitewashed. How did that end up happening? Blame these women, the Daughters of the Confederacy, a group of Southern socialites who organized in the decades after the Civil War to make sure that the history of the war was told from a decidedly Southern perspective, a perspective that cast the Confederacy in the best possible light. This propaganda campaign came to be known as the Lost Cause. You know all those monuments to the Confederacy that we've been debating about removing for years? The Daughters of the Confederacy had most of those monuments installed in the decades following the end of the Civil War. They did it to ensure that future generations would view the Confederacy in a positive light. Even worse, they worked with Southern school systems to make sure all the textbooks were written in a way that portrayed the Confederacy as heroic, that portrayed slaves as happy workers, and minimized slavery as one of the main causes of the war. When you hear someone use terms like the South will rise again, heritage not hate, and the Civil War was about states' rights, you know that person has been indoctrinated with the lost cause ideology pushed by the Daughters of the Confederacy.